Hi, I'm Shalin Patel from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the end user's track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the admin UI, and this is part 5. Here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. In parts 3 and 4, I started to cover groups in the admin UI. I showed how you can create, delete, edit them along with privileges on groups. And then covered viewing memberships, adding and removing memberships, and finally importing and exporting memberships. In this part, I'll cover composite groups, the add, include, exclude group type, attributes, and then the audit log for groups. Grouper allows you to have groups where the memberships of the group are defined to be the union, intersection, or complement of two other groups. These types of groups are known as composite groups. The groups themselves don't have any direct memberships, but they have indirect memberships based on the group math. Composite groups can be added as a member of other groups, just like a regular group. You can even use composite groups to create other composite groups. That's what you might want to do, for instance, if you want to create an intersection of three or more groups. Before making a composite group, you have to add the two groups that make it up, the left and right groups, into your group workspace. The group workspace is basically just a temporary area where you can put groups so you can easily refer to them in the admin UI. The workspace is cleared up when your session ends, so it basically won't be there the next time you log in. To convert an ordinary group into a composite group, um, here are the steps that you have to follow. First of all, you want to add the left and right groups into your group workspace. Then you can click on the Manage Members link while working on a group, and then click on the Create Composite Group link. If your group has direct members, then they will be removed at this time. Um, then you can select the left group, the right group, and select the composite type. I'll do a quick demo of this. I'm in the admin UI right now in the self-service application folder, which has a group called admins. Uh, say if I want to create a composite group now, that's the intersection of this admins group and a staff group, uh, just to make sure that the final group only contains staff. So what I would first need to do is add uh, the two existing groups that would form uh, the composite into the group workspace. So I'm going to find the staff group first, which is right here, and click this link to add to a group workspace. And by the way, if I view the memberships right now of this group, you can see that test user and test user 3 are members of this group. So now I'll go back to the folder that I was in before, the self-service application folder. Um, if I look at the admins group right now, uh, you can see test user 2 and test user 3 are members of this group. So now I'll create a new group and I'll call it admin staff only. Um, I'll remove the privileges to everyone. And I can either click on make composite right now and uh, go ahead and define the composite, or I can save it and then do that uh, next, which I'll do it um, in two separate steps. So here I can click on the Create Composite Group, um, and this will remove all uh, direct members, if there are any, which there were none. Um, I can specify the left group, um, say that's the employee staff group, and the right group, which is the admins group, and define this as an intersection and click on Create Composite Group. And so now if I view the indirect members of the admins staff only group, you can see that the only member here is test user 3, which was the only person that was in both of those groups. The next topic is group types. Groups can have group types associated with them, allowing the groups to have additional capabilities. Some built-in group types facilitate in creating other groups to make the group easier to manage, and other group types allow attributes to be added to the groups. I'll cover one example of a group type that facilitates in creating other groups. It's the add, include, exclude group type. This is a built-in group type, but it's not enabled by default, so you may not necessarily see it. But it facilitates in creating include and exclude groups. When you edit a group, you're able to add group types to it. Uh, here's an example. Say if I have a staff group, uh, some of its memberships are going to be maintained by a system of record, 
Other memberships may need to be added manually, and it's possible that some of the system of record memberships need to be excluded as well. So by adding the add include exclude group type uh, to the staff group, four other groups are automatically created. One for the excludes, one for the includes, one for the system of record, which may be maintained in some automatic way, and the last one is for the system of record plus the includes. The overall staff group is now a composite group of the system of record and includes minus the excludes. And I'll show an example of this. I'm in the employees folder right now, and here's the staff group. I'm going to add the add include exclude group type to the staff group. And by the way, you have to have privileges to be able to create groups in this folder in order for this to work. So I'll go into the staff group, click on edit group, and click on the group type for add include exclude, and hit save. And so now if I go back to the employees folder, you see that those other four groups have been created. One for excludes, one for includes, the system of record, the system of record and includes, which if I go into that and then click on manage members, um, and click on direct members, you can see that this group has two groups as members, the staff group and the, uh, the staff includes group and the system of record group. And then if I go to the staff group and click on manage members, you can see that this is a composite group um, where the composite is defined as the staff system of record and includes uh, minus the excludes. Now moving on to attributes. As of grouper 2.1, there are two different attribute frameworks. The new attribute framework cannot be managed in the admin UI, but can be managed in one of the light UIs. However, the older attribute framework can be managed in the admin UI. So if you want to add an attribute to a group, depending on how that attribute was created, you may either need to use the light UI or the admin UI. In this video, I'm only going to talk about uh, the older style attributes uh, that are managed in the admin UI. So older style attributes are associated with group types, and when you add those group types to a group, you're able to add or update those attributes on that group. After adding a group type with attributes associated with it to a group, you'll see an edit attributes link. Uh, so I'm going to go through a quick demo uh, next. Say if I have a use case where my grouper system is already set up with a group type called mail enabled. Uh, this would have probably been set up by the grouper administrator. And say the mail enabled group type has a mail attribute. Um, so this is a, a made up example. Your institution would probably have other group types and attributes, uh, but this will demonstrate how the feature works. So I'm back in the staff group now. Um, I'll click on the link to edit group. And I'll select the mail enabled group type. And again, the system has already been configured so that there's a mail attribute that can be added when you add the mail enabled uh, group type to a group. I'll save that, and now a link to edit attributes appears. So I'll click on that. Um, over here on the left, you can see that uh, this group now has three group types. The add, include, exclude, uh, the mail enabled one, which I just added now, and then base, which I haven't mentioned yet, but all groups in Grouper have the base uh, group type, which allows members to be added uh, to the group. Uh, but now with the mail enabled group type, there's this mail attribute, and I can add a value here and, um, and save this. So the last topic that I wanted to cover in this video um, is the audit log for groups. Um, if you have admin privilege on a group, then you can view the audit log by clicking on the audit log link. And again, I'll do a quick demo of this. So I'll show the audit log for the staff group. And so here's a link to the audit log. And so first of all, you can filter by date. So you can say you want to view the audit log on a date, before a date, since a date, between dates. Um, and then there's also a sorting option. And so the results show the date that the update was made, um, who made the update, the engine used to make the update, and the summary of the update. Um, so just as an example here, so at um, 102 
PM, test user using the grouper UI, um, assign the mail enabled group type uh, to this group. Uh, you can also view extended results, which basically just shows a bit more information um, about the update. And so that's all for this tutorial. You can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And here are some more links uh, you can visit for more information. Thanks.